you know, but the other piece is to your point, like how in the world do you explain that to voters without sounding like the conspiracy theorist that uh, you are claiming right. that the base of the Republican Party is now? Right. You know, and it's funny. Every oh, that's time a great point. that I can think of someone does bring it up, they look crazy. Hey there, welcome to Good Guys Getting Better. I'm Christian Hanley. I'm Aleem Boatwright. And I'm John Borden. Aleem is back from the cruise. Aleem, you survived all right? Didn't kill the kid? I did. <laughs> didn't, I did. Didn't I go did. crazy? <laughs> didn't fall in the water and didn't have to learn how to swim on the spot. So good. Good. That's good. And uh, Aleem the second didn't drive you nuts? Well behaved? No. He's, he's, always, he's always a joy. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> no, oh, no. come on, he is though. He's yeah. he's he's a good kid. We, we were good. It, it was fun. Disney Cruise, you know, uh, you know, it, it 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 did what the Disney Cruise is expected to do. You know, I I, I would I won't endorse it in saying that's the the only uh, uh, cruise line to go with. I've only been on one other cruise, and that was Carnival, and they're not known for being the the best, but they they do a mm-hmm. good job with food. And you know, I'm all about food, so that's food is literally cheap. all about food. Carnival yeah. edges out Disney just because the food was a little bit better. To our listeners, you can't see it now, but Aleem actually has some food tucked in his beard right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yes, while while John has food on the smoker and Christian and I have uh, food in the slow cooker downstairs, I mean, this is the most food-obsessed panel you could probably get. We on, 100% on one podcast. should have a pod <laughs> food, where we only talk food. about food. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, turnpike turkeys, you know, and other cooking misadventures. <laughs> oh, man. Thanksgiving throwback. All right, guys. Um, so we got to jump right into it because I know we all have uh, tight schedules today. But um, three middle-aged guys here need to talk about this whole TikTok thing in Congress. So I think it was, John, did you send the video around to the team about the, the TikTok or was that, was that you, Aleem, initially? That was Aleem. Um, a little Aleem, bit off, jump into it. Yeah. But but the interesting thing about you, 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 the, the, you were drawing that correlation between the the octogenarians and the and the, the the Gen Zers. The Gen Zers don't have really a concept of what a really functioning communist country actually is capable of. <laughs> that's, that's, right. That's, right. That's, right. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, I just mean, like it's just... crazy. No, go ahead, John. Please. Yeah, I mean, just to that, like, just just to draw a distinction, like the video does a good job. And what's the guy's name? Is it Jay Williams? Is Jay Williams J, J, J William J? <laughs> I, I yeah. Last so is a young man. Yeah, yeah. He's a college student right now, but incredibly thoughtful, incredibly insightful. Clearly, had done his homework. The problem oh, yeah. that I discern from the video is that it, even if he does know it, he didn't make it clear not just what a communist government, you know, what that means, but specifically the CCP. You yeah. know, like the the party that is running an otherwise quote unquote democratic country makes it nearly impossible for any other party to function within China, right? Mm-hmm. Like they've been self selecting for a really long time. You know, like you don't. Mm-hmm. There's a good reason that you, generally speaking, don't hear about an opposition to that party in China. Like it doesn't exist, mm-hmm. and. Right. To become a member of that party, as I understand, it's extremely restrictive. It's not mm-hmm. like here in America, where if I decided this afternoon I wanted to be a Republican, I could just go and register as a Republican and that was it. Or a con- In order to become, <laughs> or a con- whatever. Yeah. You know, like you can't, you, it, 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 is, it doesn't function that way in China. And, and if it were to function that way in the United States of America, it would be terrifying. It's such a foreign concept to us that we don't recognize it. Right. But, right. You know, it's also not that far. In order to become a member of this party, you need to basically prove your loyalty. uh, And then we will vet you and determine whether or not you can become a part of this party. We would be like, oh, my Mm -hmm. God, that's bizarre. (laughs) Right. That said, Aleem is 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 laughing. I, I would also make the argument that we're in an era where there is a growing and organic purity test within one of our our major parties, <laughs> um, which is ironic. And if I were if I were to give any feedback to this young man that made that video, it would be, don't undersell how dangerous something like that is. Absolutely. You know, like the people that run yeah. China are a group of relative to the population are an infinitesimally small group of people 
that mm-hmm. self-select who the leadership of that party is going to be. Mm-hmm. You know, like, yes, theoretically, you can vote, but wow. you, there is no way that that party will never not be in power unless something right. dramatic happens. So yep. before we even have a discussion about what we're going to do in this country, you need to have a full third uh, analysis of the CCP and just not just not treat them as if they are a normal government. They yes. they are not. Well, no, they're not. And, and, you know, I know we don't have the video to show everybody right now, um, listeners maybe and viewers, we can but yeah. we can maybe link it in, yeah, in, in, um, in the description. But, I mean, here's the thing is that what he did, and again, this kid is brilliant. I mean, he's, I don't mean he to is. be derogatory and say kid, but he's literally in college. And his argument, his, his on screen performance is, is impeccable. Uh, his his uh, style of argument is, is amazing, but it's what about ism? It's the entire after his introduction, all he's arguing about is, well, Facebook does this and Meta does this and Instagram is like, okay, well, great. Well, the United States has serious problems with uh, data and privacy. Um, For example, uh, Meta cannot Meta, Google, even um, the systems that American political parties use to contact and analyze uh, voters here in the U.S., equivalent parties in European and EU countries cannot just transpose those into their systems because there are much uh, stricter guidelines about the usage of people's data and individual citizens' property rights in their own data. So with all of that being said, that the U.S. is not the gold standard in terms of data and privacy by any stretch of the imagination, we're also not communist China. And when Mm -hmm. it comes to what's going on with the CCP there right now, and for the past several years, there's a reason why 10, 15 years ago, you'd hear about people going to see China, going to visit and seeing how fast the cities are growing and seeing how, quote unquote, amazing it is and all these transformations they had. And you don't see that anymore. Well, it's because you can't go and use Western credit cards there anymore. They have now restricted payment systems. So they control the payment systems through their own integrated credit card social network platforms, right? Um, you can only use their social mm-hmm. networks. You cannot post to Facebook and Instagram once you land there if you do get a visa to go there. Uh, I can go on and on. They have so many restrictions. But more importantly, bigger picture, and this is where the generational divide comes in, I think, what was happening in a fictional Britain in 1984 by George Orwell is quite literally happening in 2024 in China right now. Mm. Where you have a party that is not just controlling the everyday lives of citizens, but micromanaging and using advanced technology to do so. They're using street cameras and and traffic cameras, not just to monitor people en masse, but to use facial recognition, track people down. Forget having a credit score like you have for your financial behavior in the United States, which has problems with that too. But they even have social credit scores where they measure people up based on how virtuous they are in the eyes of the communist central party and then demote from people, making it impossible for you to get a train or airline ticket if you're not, quote, unquote, a good enough citizen. I mean, we're talking real dystopian, crazy stuff that this same party does and use technology is key to them doing that. Technology is how they're controlling over a billion people on on a a macro and micro level everyday lives of of individual people and so to have that same party then have nothing but a a an llc a company a go-between between them and the actual app that 170 million americans use and then use that to funnel data back to back to their party that's chilling yes i get the fact that mark zuckerberg knows too much and sells that to people who want to sell you you know, makeup and deodorant and clothes. Fine. Yeah. I, I see all the problems with that. But to compare those two things is a false equivalency. And to keep on arguing about how bad meta is when this is we're talking about a real national security threat is what about ism? No, exactly. And, and, and when I sent when I sent the video around, I, I, I it was meant to engage exactly this 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 conversation amongst people who have a, this lived experience, this unique lived experience of both coming up during the Cold War, literally, mm-hmm. uh, as, as youth, into this information age, right? And, and, and his name is Joshua Joseph, by the way. I always forget this. J, probably Joshua William Joseph is his name, because J, J. William J. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. so I, you know, I, I listened to it, and I'm like, yeah, same thing that you were saying, Christian, is that he's, he's very, very sharp. He knows mm-hmm. uh, how to present an argument, and, and, and I find myself in alignment with him on almost everything he says in, in most, most cases. But this particular argument, I was like, this very much the same things uh, you were saying. 
But I think what it boils down to, and, I, and, and here's where what he would be saying was resonating with me to some extent, was the, even though he, he did engage in the what aboutism, what he was bringing out, and maybe even not even necessarily to his knowledge, was the broader issue. And I shared this with us in a, with you guys in the conversation that we had in our little chat, that mm-hmm. the information age has created this problem, right? The, the, the evolution mm-hmm. of the information age from no, from basically the Wild West and to what it is today has generated uh, a, 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 a dynamic that we're all now free, freely giving up this deep, this very important, very valuable information about ourselves, what we do, what mm-hmm. we're interested in. We're giving it up for free, <laughs> you know, constantly. Yeah. And people are using that to profit. And, and effectively, they're using that to profit and oppress all over the world. Mm-hmm. This is, right. it is not a small issue. This is probably the greatest issue of our time, frankly, because this is where everything else starts. This is when, when people understand and know everything about you such that they can control you and control others because of you, then you know, you know you've got an issue. And, and Well, and, here's, and here's, here's really, where the rubber is, and it's the, it's, here's where it really comes down to a, a, from a practical standpoint, okay? The Supreme Court overturns Roe v. Wade, okay? Ends a woman's right to choose, not just a woman's, but young girls. You have instances now of girls as young as 12 being sexually assaulted, impregnated, and being forced to either carry that, that pregnancy to term at great personal risk or cross state lines. And in some cases now like Texas, there's plans or they've already put in place a bounty essentially on women and girls going to get reproductive health care in other states, right? Did Washington DC get shut down? Were there riots in the streets? No. But there was a vote coming up, not on a ban on TikTok, but on the potential for this this idea of divesting, right? Having the parent company have to divest and and sell it off to a a non-communist Chinese um, organization, right? Not not affiliated. Within, what, a day? Children as young as 12? Millions of people are either on the phone, online, or coming to D.C. all screaming about TikTok. There are members of Congress saying that children so young, they literally don't know if they're calling the right office or even know what a congressperson does. They're calling to complain about, don't take away my TikTok. Mm -hmm. And that was not because of some organic thing. That was because a push notification went out, an alert went out, and it mobilized that many people. Yeah. So. That that's, that's a small example, but that's that's literally what we're talking about here. There's that much control exactly. in, at, at play here. So so see, here's the here's the issue I, I'm, I'm I'm having though, and I'm I'm going to try this. I know we're going to move on pretty quickly here, but the problem on both sides of that that example that you gave is that mm-hmm. the ish the reason why people are are to this day so subdued about that really important uh, you know rights issue of of you know a woman's right mm-hmm. to choose. The reason why we're so subdued about that is in part because of the manipulation of information over the last 30 years, 40 years. It's that, OK, well, you know, this is not that big of a deal or you're 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 still have adequate rights. And, and you know, don't worry about this so much. And one political party mm-hmm. saying one thing, another political party saying the other thing. And and the one that's obviously against the interests of the people who care about this, working the, the information and, and, the, and the, the values, if you want to call them that, of individuals. To convince them that their position is okay, right? And then right. on the other token, the, the reason people get in so such an uproar over TikTok being shut down by that push notification and sort of thing, because now I value this TikTok, I value my entertainment, I value my access right. to entertainment and, and, and what I call important information, you know, which I've been convinced is important information. Not that it necessarily is, but the information I'm mm-hmm. getting on TikTok, and people say, oh, well, it's 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 the it's the news. Of the generation, uh, not necessarily. Most of it's trash. <laughs> Most of it's entertainment. Mm-hmm. Most of it's nonsense. But every now and then, right. there's something useful that comes out of it. And because of that one little, <laughs> that what one percent of the time that is useful, it becomes the most important thing to me. So it's all right. manipulation of information. Right. 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 So uh, no, it's true. And I, and I, I have seen from from more the the lefty side of, of social media, uh, the argument being made that well, like the the biggest trending news things on. TikTok are are things that are that like they don't want you to know about, right? It's like the counter narratives against um, Bet, uh, Netanyahu's offensive in Gaza, right? It's like free Palestine. It's all there's this whole like counter narrative that oh, the reason why they're banning TikTok is because the powers that be don't want you getting the real news. Hang on, TikTok is like one <laughs> percent news. 
if you want to say news, but it's it's clip it's selectively clipped from TV and other outlets, right? Or it's amateurs who are taking their their own take on things, and that's not news, that's opinion. But okay, let's 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 put news and opinion under the broader umbrella of public affairs. That's still like what two percent of the content. The rest of it is stupid dances and people like cooking chicken and Nyquil. And yes, that's a real TikTok video. Well, let's so not it's call like I, let's call them dance. <laughs> <laughs> so. I, <laughs> I get, I get it, but like I, I know I sound like grumpy old man. Get off my lawn right now. I'll own that. Fine, I get that. But like, you really have people in Congress who understand the national security implications, but do not understand the lived experience of their own people, twenty hmm. something years old living online. And then by the same token, you've got citizens who do not understand at all the national security implications or the functioning of our own government versus that country's government and what's really happening here, big picture beyond their entertainment. Yeah. yeah. And they're talking past each other. Exactly. So John, um, another crazy thing going on right now, of course, is uh, Donald Trump's plans for if he is to be reelected. I mean, today was today or yesterday. uh, He put out a post saying that there will be a bloodbath if he is not reelected. And then, of course, before that, he had put out a plan about what he would do once in office on day one. He wants to be a dictator, he said. And after that, wants to quickly do insane things like uh, round up millions of people on mass have mass deportations. And uh, very quickly chip away at American democracy. It sounds like we're being kind of crazy here, a little bit paranoid. But in fact, this has been something that uh, has been published online. This is now a real political platform. There's Project 2025. And then, of course, there's his longer term plans. But I think that was your your take you wanted to jump in on today. Yeah, I would say to everyone that is listening to this right now, I'm not going to opine, give my thoughts or reaction to it. The first thing that you should do as soon as you hear this, pause this podcast right now and go look about Trump's immediate plans, the things that he's published. Go to his website, whatever you want, and you find out exactly Mm -hmm. what he has planned if he is in office. Forget the talking Mm -hmm. and the stump speeches. One of the crazy things that is I'm talking about what he plans to do with your rights, regardless of the party that you're in, regardless of you're voting on. Like these rights affect everyone. Right. What he's planning to do affects everyone. And Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if you're a Republican, independent, Democrat, or Green Party, doesn't make a difference. If you're not down with him, then you are the other. Mm -hmm. So stop right now and go check it out. And also, if you have a few free extra moments, go look at the Republican platform uh, uh, for the foreseeable future. Again, you, you don't have to believe me. You know, I'm not speculating here. You just look at, you know, who who just got installed as the uh, vice chair of the Republican National Committee. But John, but um, his daughter-in-law. Yep. The only only problem, John, and, and, and what you're saying is so, so important and, and valuable right now. But the problem is, is that despite what what seems to be the extraordinarily obvious to you and, and Christian and myself, when we go and look at a video like that, that when other people mm-hmm. look at that video, they're like, yeah, that's exactly what I want. And And this is the problem. Even if you don't, even there's, there's several people who will look at will look at that video of what Trump plans to do, and they'll say, "Oh, well, I'm not so much in favor of that." But that other thing he said, "Oh, I'm really in favor of that." They'll completely mm-hmm. ignore the fact that 90 percent or 75 percent or whatever is it absolutely insane is okay because I'm okay with the other thing he's doing. This is how we've treated Donald Trump for the last decade or more, right? This is how we've treated this man. It, he's a, a certified and insane person who says mm-hmm. insane things, but as soon as he says one thing that's less right now, go watch Being There with Peter Sellers. I know you guys haven't gotten a chance to see it yet, but watch that movie. Mm-hmm. He is Peter Sellers in that movie. That's who Donald Trump is, but just he says a lot more. <laughs> so look, well, I, I, that, that's fine. I'm going to go through just the, the list yeah. of things yeah, that are affected. So that, it's abortion. It is climate policy. It's the economy. It's the expansion of presidential powers. It is the rolling back of LGBTQIA plus rights. Um, and there are a few other things. Um, and, and of course, I'm sorry, the other the other piece is uh, immigration. And immigration, mm-hmm. by the way, just isn't the southern border. You know, no. like, again, we forget the Muslim ban. <laughs> you know, like this, this is not like that's not done. You know, there we have right. this belief that once something is stopped in its tracks, that it's gone forever. No, and it's a dry run. If you it's say, a trial run. 
but it, but it's not just that the the Republican Party in particular is excellent at playing the long game, mm -hmm. right? Like Roe v. Wade was fifty years old when it was repealed. Mm -hmm. They are about, and there has been growing opposition. I mean, no, it exactly. is a movement. Yeah. It is a movement that has been generations in the making, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You know, so this isn't just like, hey, let's just stop, like. You know, Joe Biden becoming the president is stopping the bleeding, like the gushing. Right. right. But the bigger issue is that how do you strengthen these institutions? Donald Trump and the Republican National Committee is very clear on what they want to do. And this isn't this isn't championing a cause. This is consolidating power. Mm -hmm. Just yeah. just to be clear. Which is already mm -hmm. right, like for a long time. We, right. we will do these key things to get into power. And then once we are in here. We will restrict the access that people have to get us mm -hmm. out of power, right? right? You know, so this is everything from it's stacking the, the Supreme Court. Right now. Say that again. It's the reason the Republicans control the House of Representatives right now is for that they've been consolidating power. There's no reason right. why a minority party, uh, population-wise, should be controlling mm -hmm. the majority of the House of Representatives. It doesn't make sense. No. With policies no. that are clearly in the far minority. But Far is. minority. I mean, that's the thing. It's it's not even like, you know, 49 percent. Right. You, you go across everything, everything. Um, we, we already mentioned abortion, but abortion um, guns it go all the way down the list. They are in such a small minority. And in the Senate, that minority is is locked in by virtue of the Constitution. Right. So that you get you get two senators for the 500,000 people in Wyoming. And yes, it is that small. And it then is. two senators for the you know 40 million people in California. And we have to live with that. But then on top of that, using high tech methods of gerrymandering and carving the map to create districts that are safe for Republicans. And, you know, their their only concern is being primaried by an even crazier right winger. They then even in the lower chamber that's supposed to most directly represent the people can can pack that chamber with these nut jobs, people like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who represent the point of view of a handful of the most radical Clearly. people in the country. And it doesn't mean that other people or that the majority is then going to be, you know, aligned with AOC. There's an entire spectrum, right, of, of political views and opinions. Uh, but there's no way that a party that represents such a small sliver uh, of of uh, political viewpoints in this country should have that commanding of majority. They shouldn't even have a shot at the, at the majority until they start to moderate mm -hmm. where they stand on these key issues. And but people will blame that problem on the inadequacy of the Democratic Party to, to present its message. And, I, and don't get me wrong, always that's part, certainly part of the issue. Um, but the issue is that people don't seem to understand the gravity of certain things. Like you can't, well, what, equate, yeah, you can't equate the failings of a, of a party who actually believes in the interests that you have, but the failings right. to actually execute. You can't equate that to somebody who's working directly against you. It's not the same. Well. Exactly. Well, the thing is, is that whenever I hear it, and it happens even on very respectable uh, shows, roundtable discussions in, in, in great publications, too. Whenever I hear this whole thing of like, well, Joe Biden needs to go out and say, I'm like, that is the most intellectually lazy hot take from someone who claims to be an expert. I'm sorry. If you do not know about things like Project Red Map that David Daly wrote about years ago, that, that has gone on now for over 15 years of using the 2010 census data and reapportionment to carve up the maps using a battery of powerful computers to surgically carve up streets, blocks into these these high tech carved up little districts to make them safe for Republicans and to lock in a minority ruling party in the Congress. Then don't talk about about how how we need to win back Congress. Congress has already been set up such that it is weighted for Republicans. We talked about how the Senate, that's something new, right? That's that's the big compromise of the Constitution, right? That is like, you know, middle school civics, right? That is how you got big states like Virginia and Pennsylvania to sign on with Rhode Island and have that compromise. Got it. Fine. But like, if you're if you're going to talk about how the Democrats need to like be rah rah this and Biden needs to get out there more like how is how is Kamala Harris or Joe Biden standing behind another podium going to fix the fact that the right wingers in this country, not even the GOP proper, but the far right wing, John Birch Society people, sort of the the antecedents to the Trump movement, started 
planning for the takeover of the Supreme Court, the takeover of the the country's law schools and universities, uh, publications, creating a counter narrative and a right wing media uh, ecosystem that would delegitimize the truth of the mainstream media started that in the early 1970s. And only now are we catching up and even talking about it in 2024. Mm -hmm. What the fuck, I ask you, is (laughs) Joe Biden going to say from Scranton, Pennsylvania, at some podium, what is he going to say that's going to fix that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Tell him why you mad, son. Tell him why you mad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, look, this is, this is, Christian, as you and I have talked about, I mean, this is, to the point that I made earlier, this is a long standing mm-hmm. intentional effort to create minority rule in this country. And yes. I don't think that's an exaggeration. No, it's, you know, it's, like, it's, you, it's intentional. Yeah. 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 Like you, you can see it now and where the Democrats, I'm not even going to blame the Democrats. Like, I don't think this is the fault of the Democrats. Yeah. Right. You know, like, first off, I have come to the point in my life where I believe that until we decide to escape racism, we can't escape racism. Right. You know, so putting Mm -hmm. it out there, that's just always something that's going to be there. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, but the other piece is to your point, like how in the world do you explain that to voters without sounding like the conspiracy theorist that uh, you are claiming right. that the base of the Republican Party is now? Right. You know, and it's funny. Oh, every that's time a great point. That I can think of someone does bring it up. They look crazy. Like when Hillary Clinton back in the 90s talking about why yeah. Whitewater was talking about uh, something to the effect of this far flung, you know, vast, this right vast wing conspiracy. conspiracy. That's that's right right wing wing conspiracy. conspiracy. Yep. yep. You know, people are just like, oh, yeah, she's she is a woman and she's off of her rocker. <laughs> like yeah. it was it was. It, first off, Hillary Clinton has dropped some gems over her career. Mm-hmm. You know, like when she was running against Donald Trump in 2016 and the abortion question comes up and I have mm-hmm. I am such a fan of the way that she framed it. I also am not a fan of the way that it is currently framed in terms of reproductive rights. And I'm going to explain why Hillary Clinton. And it's like, look, what is really at stake is, and she said something to the effect that I've seen this in other countries where women don't have the choice, Mm -hmm. right? Like the way that this whole debate is framed, it is in terms of, um, it is not properly framed in a way that we're not just restricting a woman's right to choose. It is the state making making a declaration that a woman can't choose Mm -hmm. those. It's not that they're two totally different things, but that's a far more impactful statement. It is the Mm -hmm. government saying that at a certain point, you don't have a right to control your body, that I've been to countries where women don't have the right to control their bodies. And that's really what the issue is. So when we're talking about the abortion issue, I would love to really hear the conversation be the state is taking control over a woman's body. The government mm-hmm. is taking control over a woman's body. Let's just get right to the heart of it. Yeah. That's what it is. Well, and that's we, Texas you, already, right? That's Missouri. Missouri literally right now says that it, they just passed a law, what was it, this past week, I believe, that a, a woman cannot file for divorce even from an abusive husband while she's pregnant. Hmm. She's got to stay with him. And 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 you you ha- we we don't understand it. And my concern is that to your point about TikTok, Aleem, because things are convenient, because things are easy, because things are entertaining, because we live in a country where we work too much and don't have enough leisure, there the little is. bit of time, the little bit of time that we have to ourselves to be contemplative and thoughtful, engage civically, we give it up because we want to be on TikTok. And then we want to complain that they're taking <laughs> our TikTok away rather right. than as a woman, they're, the state's taken away your ability to control your own body, which is Christian, what you said earlier. To me, right. that's the issue. That's the alarm bell. And and don't get me wrong. I don't want to be insensitive to people that have made their careers as the young man that we were talking about earlier has on, on TikTok. Oh, no, not like, at it all. It is a part no, of his all. livelihood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, and, and I don't want, like, look, if, you know, this podcast right now pays us absolutely nothing, right? At some <laughs> point, it will. You know, I'll, I, I, I believe that it will. But with that said... I also recognize that the money comes at a cost, right? Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. So I, everything does. I, yeah. I I very much would love to to bring it all full circle and to really combine these two topics. Hey guys, what's our, what are our priorities? 
Mm-hmm. You know, like we can't, I heard this first, this phrase recently that really bothers me. Uh, someone in my family uses it frequently, but things mm-hmm. that are clearly an issue now that are the good old ounce of prevention. It's like, mm-hmm. like, that's a future me problem. Like I'll take the pound of cure. It's like, trust me, you don't oh, want the pound no, of cure. No, you don't want the pound of cure. You don't no. want the pound no. of cure, right? Because no. it, it, just think about it this way. The Emancipation Proclamation was signed in 60, 1864. 1863? No, four or five. It was, yeah, it was yeah. all, yeah, it was every, anyone who was held in bondage in states currently in a state of insurrection against the United States. So it's 64, I think. Yeah. So then how long did it take for the Civil Rights Act to become law? 100 years. <laughs> right. So, so all of the, the gains that were immediately made after the emancipation, after the conclusion of the Civil War, after the South lost, the conclusion of the Civil War, the free, the almost immediate and radical freeing of slaves, mm-hmm. the immediate injection into the civic and political process by people that were formerly slaves, in, in, on a daily basis, transforming this country in particular in the South, it took, relatively speaking, a blink of an eye to roll all of that back. And then it took, mm-hmm. you know, exponentially longer to then get back the things mm-hmm that were granted, if not to a greater degree, at the end of emancipation. Don't think for a second that that's not the, that's not the pound of cure. A hundred no, really, years worth of cure. Yeah, it was, it was 90 years to undo what was previously undone in 10. Yeah. So if Reconstruction right. happened, you know, right after that, after the Emancipation Proclamation to the 1870s, that then gets rolled back. It took 90 more years until the 100-year mark of the proclamation to actually get to the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Legis- Rights Act of 1965. And that's just right. legislative. Right? <laughs> that's just like, yeah, right. It did not change people's right. So, yeah. Right. And as we talked about before, our parents grew up in a world where the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act were not law. Right. Like, I, I call my parents right day. I, I'm talking to my dad last night. I'm talking to my parents every other day. Like, that's the world that they grew up in. Like, that just happened. Yeah. Right. So don't think for a second that that rolling back Roe v. Wade, that Dobbs rolling back Roe v. Wade and this mm-hmm. bringing it all full circle, this the platform 2025 that Trump has um, like this isn't this isn't a pretext to starting to roll all of that back. And then the question is, how much longer is it going to take for you to get back the things that you already had? Yeah. And that, mm-hmm. that's the concern. And that's what everyone needs to pay attention to. Like, don't get me wrong. Social media is great. We also, to this young man's point, we need to think about better ways to regulate the internet, right? Mm-hmm. And I know regulation is a bad thing, but his, <laughs> one of his other points was that, that TikTok, we're regulating TikTok, but we won't regulate Facebook in the same way because it's a clear economic interest to an American company, right? The same applies for, is, where is, Al, is Alphabet an American company as well? Google, the yeah. parent company of Google? Yeah, it's Google, yeah. 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 Yeah, so you've got you've got Alphabet, you've got Meta, you know, like the two social media giants, right? Then you've got TikTok, right? And then he also talked about the other, you know, the top downloaded. You've got Timu and Shine and TikTok, and there's one other that I don't know. Right, Timu, yeah, Shine being an environmental catastrophe unfolding every single day of our lives, churning out fast fashion that causes metric tons of air pollution and climate change causing pollution, and then creates trash that ends up in the ocean. I mean, you can go on. These things are trash. These apps that people are downloading from China. China knows it's trash. They know that they're dumping it on the West. It's quite intentional. Um, and, you know, again, again, what about ism? He's talking about, oh, that, that's sort of the conspiratorial thinking. That's where he loses me. It's the whole thing about, well, you know, they're not going to do anything about, t- about meta or alphabet because the American, you know, profit making. Okay, stop. If you have one piece of legislation here and any lawsuits coming out of that, this is a common law jurisdiction. They will set a legal precedent upon which we can build and then actually have those conversations in terms of legal cases and in terms of future legislation about Alphabet, Meta, and these other corporations that are doing comparable things, but within the United States. It also misses the point, again, to the earlier discussion about the national security implication. Yes, Mark Zuckerberg might be selling your data to sell you more, ad- sell more advertising to sell you more crap, but that's not going to the Chinese Communist Party for whatever ends they may have. And if something were to happen and there is a data breach with a, a U.S. party like what happened with Equifax, 
you might have recourse. There are class action lawsuits. You have an ability to go talk to an attorney and see what your options are. Try yeah. going to an attorney in your neighborhood and seeing what you can do about the Chinese Communist Party. I'll wait. But, John, when you're talking about sort of priorities here and, and what um, – what we're confronting going forward towards the next election and how we have to be serious about these conversations. You know, I did while we were talking and, and you were kind of getting like the top five hits about Donald Trump's plan. Should he heaven forbid win again? I did pull up sort of the longer form platform of the I'm looking 20, at it uh, project 2025. Right. Well, if yeah. you download the PDF of the, the actual full plan and you just look at the, the table of contents, the, you know, the executive mm -hmm. summary here, you're talking about, okay, this is, it's in such sanitized language, but it is incredibly authoritarian, uh, nightmarish sort of content here. So talking about the executive office of, of the president, right? But then right. Central, central personnel agencies managing the bureaucracy. In other words, getting rid of the independence of the Department of Justice and using it as an arm of the presidency to take after his enemies, like people in the media, like even anything as tiny as this podcast, something as big as NBC Universal, who are criticizing the man in power, right? Department of Defense, all the way down, uh, the General Wel Welfare Department of Justice. There it is right there. It's its own line item. Um, managing the economy, um, independent regulatory agencies. And of course, they want to, uh, they would say rein in, I would say control for personal and political purposes, as the former president has said he would do. So this is not conspiratorial thinking. This is project2025.org. It is a project of the uh, Heritage Foundation, which used to be, you know, Reaganite, um, uh, sort of, 1980s conservative republican sort of a think tank uh but this now is all in for trump and it's it their footprint is all over it they disclose their interest in it their their production of this plan and this is this is why it's it's so dangerous because uh yes trump to your point aleem is a crazy person yes he's unhinged and he's showing signs of serious cognitive decline that of course he's projecting on onto his his opponent but he has enablers Yes, this does. is what people miss is that it's not just the buffoon who's on TV and is getting all oh, yeah. of the, the huh? hits. It's the it's the people around him who are enabling this because they want to have proximity to power. Absolutely. And 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 he's just the mouthpiece that, you know, mm -hmm. that they need. Right. I mean, because mm -hmm. they, you know, people people seem to appreciate him in some way. So this, this is my problem. This, you know, you know, I'm all for this conversation. And, I, you know, I think this is very important. That we point out these things, but I'm just I'm at a loss when I come when it comes down to people understanding why all of this is bad. I I'm not mm -hmm. confident in the the at least the young well in 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 the general average American voter understanding how bad this is. Like yeah. you, you almost have yeah. to be far yeah. left progressive to really get that this is terrible. Like the it, nowadays it's like oh well you know okay well I you know I I feel like the Less regulation is good. That, then they put it all in that bucket. They say, oh, well, you know, uh, they have been treating him unfairly in the Justice Department, it seems to me. So I'm, uh, that's all right, too. You know, it's like it, they mm. forget the fact that that only those changes are authoritarian at their core. Right. And that's right. not what America has ever survived on. Authoritarianism has always been fought against. Right. <laughs> that's right. how the country in itself and of itself got them, got, you know, founded, frankly. So, yeah. I mean, so. You know, my issue is is not simply that people need to hear and see that this platform is 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 bad. They need to understand why it's bad, and mm -hmm. and I'm trying to figure out how can you. It's it's education once again. It's like we, we just well, let me let me ask you let, let me ask you this. Go, ahead, I'm sorry. The, the, there, it's interesting. You said that this country was founded as a resistance to authoritarianism, but it wasn't. I don't know if I would call the crown the same thing as an authoritarian. Uh, of, I, I don't. I I wouldn't say that, you know. And and one of the core issues was voice, mm -hmm. right? Like represent taxation without representation. Like your your ability to vote is your ability to speak, mm -hmm. right? Like that is that is essential to the revolution. Mm -hmm. That's essential to our democracy. Mm -hmm. Like your voice, your audible voice, and your voice with your vote, like. Those are the things that are sacred in our democracy, mm -hmm. right? So what, what Donald Trump, and it's ironic to even think about this, and let's just go with the TikTok piece for a second. Forget banning TikTok for us. Forget, 
let's let's actually go with the idea of banning TikTok, mm-hmm. right? Like Christian, you said earlier, people don't understand that the the CCP controls any. Not only do they control the social media pa- platforms, they control what you post. Mm-hmm. Not content regulators for a company, right? The government, right? And the greatest example. This is all credit to John Oliver. He did a great piece on this. You can't you can't post pictures or the word Winnie the Pooh. Yes. On the social media oh, yes, networks in China. That. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tell them why. Right, like, Tell them why. So, so there is as an act of resistance and defiance, mm-hmm. um, the I, I I'm blanking on his name right now, but the Xi leader Xi of the Xi, 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 Xi Jinping, Xi Jinping. Yep. um, uh, the act of resistance and or the internet meme for him is Winnie the Pooh, right? And he finds it <laughs> deeply offensive. Right. Like and and part of it is projecting this image of power and of Mm -hmm. strength and stability. And Winnie Pooh is an affable, overweight bear that doesn't wear pants. Oh, Bob. (laughs) You know, he's you know, and it is the the antithesis. So good luck going to China and posting something on one of their controlled social media networks about Winnie the Pooh. In this Mm -hmm. country, even the folks that, you know come and you know watch this and they listen in to what we have to say and i'm appreciative of it and they react they respond they say whatever they want it's because we're accustomed to reacting to speaking mm-hmm. you know like we're accustomed to saying i don't agree with that that's wrong i'm going to call you out on it we believe in it with our own uh agency as individuals to speak we also believe with the same thing with the press you know like the press enables and aggregates our voices to question and to help monitor what the government is doing Mm -hmm. in what, and I'm looking at what I'm looking at it right now. You go to that first, that first couple of sentences in the first paragraph on the section of the executive, uh, the executive officer, the president and the United States. Yeah. They basically say like, you guys have been reading the constitution wrong this entire time. The goal of the framers (laughs) was to vest all of the executive power in all the executive decision-making in one person Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. one office. And for them to delegate, like, we don't need this bureaucracy. We don't need independent this. We need all of these people to function narrowly under one person. Mm -hmm. But that in and of itself takes away your ability to speak, Mm -hmm. right? Like the R R as flawed as it is, and Christian, you and I have this drilled into us in law school, Mm-hmm. Like at its core, even our, our legal system in an ideal way is designed to find the truth. Mm-hmm. You know, like you're not going to get through law school if you don't learn. I mean, we learned the Socratic method. Mm-hmm. Like that, that is one of the great tests of truth, how to find whether or not something is true or not. You know, like you can't know the truth of something until you can test it against its strongest it, arguments. Right. 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 Like that, that is the bedrock of our legal system it undergirds our democracy. You start messing mm-hmm. with that, then you mess with the ability to find what's true, what's real, mm-hmm. which I think is also where we're at right now. Well, and that's what you authoritarianism know, so- thrives on, right? I mean, that's that's literally, there's, there's a reason why, you know, Orwell and uh, it wasn't Upton Sinclair, I'm trying to think of the other author as well. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm drawing a blank here. But I mean, that's why, misinformation, disinformation, uh, gaslighting, all of these things were central to those stories. They were cautionary tales. That's what we're living in right now. It's it's not even that every single false narrative comes from the Internet Research, Research Agency in St. Petersburg, Russia, or it comes straight from the Chinese Communist Party, but creating an overall media e- ecosystem and an overall environment in which um, the truth doesn't matter. Entertainment's more important than information. And well, both sides do it. Everybody's a little bit guilty. All you know, all those sort of things where there up is down, down is up. There is no correct. There's no right or wrong. That is what is essential for right. authoritarianism to survive. Mm. That's that's what they need. And so it's it's a there's there's a reason why some people say right now that we're we're sort of sleepwalking into autocracy. It's not always sleepwalking, but sometimes I think that's a, a good way of describing it. It's because when you're like you said, John, you're overworked, and so you're when you do have what time you have to yourself, you're just going to entertain yourself and self soothe and not get involved. Um, and when what you're consuming is just either entertainment or it's misinformation or actively disinformation meant to make you less informed, 
multiply that over every day of the week times every month of the year over a few years and you've got a population that is now susceptible to authoritarianism when people are informed and engaged you cannot let them you they will not willfully give up their freedoms but now you have whether it's uh reporters or even jordan klepper with the daily show going to trump rallies and asking you know okay trump says he wants to be a dictator on day one what do you think i mean you cannot stand for that right you're an american right you want to fight for freedom and these people will say back to him like no i mean sometimes you need to kick in the butt and yeah, maybe yeah, we need exactly. a strong man here that that's the problem you know that's what i've been trying that, that's it's amazing I mean, I, I think about like my great grandfather who was in World War II. I think if he heard somebody say that, even at 80 something years old when, you know, he was still alive, he probably would have <laughs> beat you over the head with his cane. I mean, like, quite seriously. Well, that's the arrogance. It's though. unreal. That, that's, that's the arrogance that to say that it really doesn't matter what you say bad about this person. I'm going to like them. I'm going to find a reason to like them. And right. Support. That's really what it right. is because he's laying out, you know, Jordan Klepper. I love, I love what he does. Is that, but it's so, so op, such obvious issues. He's just using the words that the man says himself, right, and presents mm -hmm. them to his supporters, and those supporters looking right dead back in the eye and say, "Oh well, <laughs> I'm going to vote for him." I really don't care, the, the, right? I mean, this is the problem, and I know we got to move on, but like this is the problem. The maybe the greatest issue is that we think binarily in terms of every issue mm -hmm. like it is only one or the other right and that's where what aboutism becomes so prevalent because mm -hmm. it's like because it's me against you and my team has to win mm -hmm. you know like it's not mm -hmm. team us right you know like you're an american i'm an american it's not how is america going to win it's this version of america or that version of america right. and this is the only thing that can win so there is no there is no informed conversation about American values. We've talked about this quite a bit on this podcast. Mm -hmm. I would love again to see Donald, I mean, not Donald Trump, Joe Biden, you know, just here's the moral arc of the United States of America. And I'm not mm -hmm. saying he needs to give a constitutional law class because we all know how that was politically harmful to Barack Obama. Like, oh, here's, yeah. you know, Professor Obama and he's going to give us electron yeah. con law. But one of the things that he could do so well was paint that moral arc and he could say it with mm -hmm. authority. We don't have that now. And it really is bringing it all full circle. It's up to tip -top, TikTok. You know, like, they, that, that'll be our moral compass. That's where we will find our morality. Like, that's it. And that, that, that can't be, yeah. right? Because the mm -hmm. interest of a TikToker in so many cases is clicks, it's views. Do whatever I want to get those. And those clicks mm -hmm. and views turn to dollars and cents. Mm -hmm. so, you know, so, so yeah. that that can't be again. So, it, or just say like, "Hey, greed is what." Like, let's just all be. Here's my Star Trek reference. Let's all be Ferengis. <laughs> let's just let's just have the rules of acquisition. Acquisition, right? That's our moral code, and that'll be it. it Whatever two hundred and plus laws of acquisition, that'll be it. You know, or, you know John, what I love about else. you is even when I think I'm a real dork, you just you you outshine me. I I I love it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like you gotta you gotta tap into that inner dorkdom. I mean, <laughs> let's do it. And I, I'm I, I've developed into a dork later in life, so yeah, this is a mature true. adult decision to be a you, dork. You decided to be a dork, exactly. But so yeah, I mean, this is not just a hypothetical conversation, right? The entire thing about a, the questions of morality and about about what aboutism, this whole like change in the narrative, this is happening in real time right now, and to to the great benefit of this would-be authoritarian Donald Trump. I mean, you look at the instance of Fonnie Willis in the case in Georgia. There's, first of all, there's several different cases around Donald Trump right now, 96 criminal indictments, right, criminal counts. And the one in Georgia right now, I would be shocked if most Americans even remember what the actual underlying, what he's actually accused of, what the underlying case is actually about. Because what he's successfully done is made the entire news cycle for you know weeks and months now about the fact that Fonnie Willis had this relationship with this outside attorney who she hired through her office to work on this case. Now, John, you and I know from having to do legal ethics class that it, this is, you know, something where his rights as a criminal defendant were not affected. There was nothing about what Fonnie Willis did with this guy on her personal time, going on a cruise, whatever, that had anything to do with anything but in legal ethics you know about the idea of the specter of impropriety in other words 
it, it could be disqualifying for you as an attorney it, or a judge sitting presiding over a case. In fact, if you do something that even if it didn't directly have an effect on the outcome of a case or a, a, a criminal defendant's rights in a case in this case, but you create this environment in which it seems as though things are not above board, it seems improper, and therefore it causes the public and those involved in the case to lose faith in the system. And, and in this case, look, she did something that was, I would say, just in a word, stupid. It shouldn't have happened. I'm not going to defend what she did. But again, it had no impact on his rights as a as a criminal defendant in the state of Georgia or in the United States. And it's not just some silly story. It's not just some tabloid junk. Now, at this point, he has done two things. One, successfully completely changed the, the news story and made it seem once again as though he is somehow the victim when he is afforded every benefit of the doubt by our system. And second to that, he's also once again kicked the can down the road. His, his, his tactic is always to delay, delay, delay. And now at this point, in yet another case, this might not, we might not have an adjudication until after the election. All right. So first, the I don't know if this is totally the case, but the idea of the perception of impropriety, mm -hmm. I attribute that more to the judiciary and less to the less to counsel. Yes. Right. But I mean, for, for people so, who are not lawyers, though, I mean, yes, I, I, get, well, I hear what you're saying. It's, it's a part of what I do as well, frankly, is that, you know, any, anybody who has, uh, um, has a, any kind of uh, a role where they're position of trust, we get, yeah, where they're judging. Uh, someone in any way, or yeah. Accept. Yeah, I mean, like, look, if if this is going to be something that's going to impact the adjudication, that's one thing. Mm. Um, this this is still, it, it 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 in some regards, it's still like a a sporting event. Mm -hmm. Like you can set up all the conditions that you want to win, but you still have to play the game, mm -hmm. right? Where the game gets fixed is when the officiating tilts the game in the favor of one person or the other. So the question is, is her personal life tilting? Is it going to affect the adjudication of, of, of this case? Mm -hmm. And if the answer to that question is no, then what are we talking about? Right. And it's like, you know, again, at this point, you know, it comes back to this, like, you know, Donald Trump has put his finger on the scales, literally mm -hmm. uh, the scales of justice and in an attempt to win the election, mm -hmm. like that's it. And, you know, it, it is forcing in one way, it, it's forcing everyone to get up again and speak, but to also mm -hmm. pay attention, you know, like if you think that he's doing it here and it's not just him, you know, like he now has the full backing and support of the Republican National Committee with anything that he wants to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like there is nothing that he can do that will be called out as wrong or inconsistent with the party because he has seized control. Forget power. Mm -hmm. He has seized control of the party. And if you listen to what the I don't know if inauguration is the right word, but when Laura Trump was oh, announced, yeah. yeah, the announcement was one of the more chilling things that I've heard. The person that was announcing and or inaugurating her said, like, look, mm -hmm. some people make a big I'm paraphrasing here. Some people make a big deal about qualifications and whether or not you know what you're doing when you get in the office. But. God anoints people coming into office. Mm -hmm. And and don't get me wrong, like in my faith life, it is important. That is an important concept to me. But that that isn't a blanket cover for not being mm -hmm. qualified. Right. And, and when yeah. I say qualified, like not never doing anything like this before, your sole qualification is proximity. You're mm -hmm. you that that is a lot different than being inexperienced, right? Like it'd be different if she was inexperienced in doing this, but not being qualified at all. And then having the party and having that office say, it doesn't matter whether she's qualified or not. Like it's a red herring. Mm -hmm. That That is chilling, but that tells you everything about where the Republican party is now. So, so this, They would rather have a dictator as a champion than to right. champion democracy. Oh. I don't, as a matter of fact, I have to get this out of lean before you come. I don't, I don't <laughs> ever again want to hear someone in the, I don't say in the Republican party, that's a stretch. I'm going to, I'm going to walk that back. I find it resentful that nationalism is a property of the Republican party or excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. 
Americanism is the property of the Republican Party. Mm-hmm. You know, American identity is the prop- uh, property of the Republican Party. Mm-hmm. If you, again, want to talk about one of these things that has been a long time in development, the idea that, that is the, those are the patriots, you know, like they right. are the flag bearers of the United States of America. Ooh. Right. That's ludicrous. Oh. That's ludicrous. Like that, again, mm-hmm. and the morality in that, I keep going back to that, but it's so basic. It's like yeah. hug the flag well, and and wave your guns. Well, I'm going right. to I'm going to jump in on the tail end of that, John, and, and say and go for it. That's going to be kind of provocative, but honestly, white nationalism has become part of the Republican Party. It is not part of the Democratic. Oh, party. absolutely, I mean, absolutely. Frankly, so where does yeah. it lie? Where does it lie? If they vote, where do they vote? Uh, so so what does that mean, <laughs> right? And, and if we can agree that white nationalism is not really a good thing which I venture to say at least 75% of the country probably believes, then why are we voting with people who vote with them? I, it doesn't make any sense. So, uh, but here, here's what, what that, that seize of control of, of, of the Republican Party that, that was uh, uh, executed by Trump there. Um, what I think it, it, you know, it helped illustrate something that I, I, I've had a concern with for a while, and I think this is a flaw potentially in the Constitution, in that I don't think the Constitution fully appreciated the ability of an executive to seize control of his party's uh, role in the legislative branch and the judicial branch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was probably not fully appreciated in the framing because that's what you have today is that, you know, if if Trump was, you know, still adversarial with the House, then Mm -hmm. they could rein in a lot of what he was doing. You know, he would have been impeached and he would have been removed from office after the treason that he, I mean, all all these things would have happened. But but no, no, they they bow down to him now. So it's like, this is the flaw, right? So this is something that's unique in in the history of of this country. This has never happened before where they feel as though they're beholden to him because they, they feel as though they owe their election to him. So they can't mm-hmm. stay in office if they do not follow his lead. And, of course, he appoints those uh, judges who are going to be loyal, at, at least to the best he, you know, he can, he can get right. to be loyal right. to the justice. So he's literally seizing control of three branches of government, which was not something that, thought was, that was thought conceivable in the framing of this Constitution. And that's, that's the whole reason why it had three pieces, right? So they, that mm-hmm. wouldn't happen. But because of how politics and information is being shared today, and how it's all been melded together, he's been able to accomplish that in some sense. And that's... Mm -hmm. Well, that goes back to what you were saying earlier, though, Aleem, in that we are, as a a country, we were were reacting to the crown and not an autocrat. Mm -hmm. You know, like, there's a difference, right? So, so much of that framing is to not allow for the consolidation of power under a crown, Mm -hmm. right? And again, it might sound like a distinction without a difference, but I think it's a very important one. Right. And mm-hmm. like, hence the separation of powers, like we're not going to aggregate all of this right. authority in one person. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. And the fears that 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 takes away our voice. And I think ultimately you still get to that with an autocrat. Right. But, you know, the crown had some obvious flaws that autocracy, maybe it, it doesn't, mm-hmm. you know, and then even worse when you combine the two. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And we have plenty of examples of that right now in modern in the modern world. You know, like it's not it wasn't too long ago that um, Saudi Arabia, you know, combined, you know, theocracy and the crown. Right. You know, and this is what you have here. The same thing happened with uh, Iran, you know, with the revolution. Like you've got this theocratic melding with the with a crown with, you know, basically it's kind of effectively a crown. Mm -hmm. And you've got this insulation where now these people what is sophisticated now is these people have set themselves up to never not be in power. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and like, you know, again, the crown has flaws, you know, the, the crown has, you know, palace intrigue, you know, as it were, it relies on, uh, ultimately just relies on inbreeding. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, like, uh, that's how you keep it going, you know, but autocracy is <laughs> a little bit different. Like there's just enough spreading of the wealth literally to keep one group of people in power forever. And you can spread them out across the different parts of the government. Mm-hmm. I, want, I, want to, right? I want to back up to something you said earlier as well, John, uh, about, you know, the, the my team must win kind of concept. Right. And I feel like 
that's exactly how you know the far right handles things and maybe the far i won't even say the far left but the moderate left might even do that but what happens on the left is that um i'm sorry what happens on the left is that you have such a a a broad spectrum of ideals it's almost as though they're looking for the the the, you know, looking for Biden to make any single mistake, right, and then seize on that for as a reason to separate with him. Whereas the opposite on the right, right, you look the, the, any any mistake that they find with with Trump, they find a reason to forgive it or a reason and they to rationalize. Forgive. But on the left, it's yeah, like oh, yeah. we're finding a reason to you know uh, you know to, to to leave him. Oh, Biden did it again. I'm done with Biden now. You know, it's like oh well, wait a second. Well, because uh, because we're not we're not two sides of the same coin, right? I mean, there's there's the the guy on if it's not TikTok, it's it's Instagram. It was those videos about that, and we've talked about it earlier on this pod too, right? It's like it's for for people in the Trump cult. And I'm not saying all conservatives, all Republicans. I'm saying people who are like you know with Trump, they think that they are in some big battle against us meaning i guess everybody else on earth right but it's, it's an us versus them dichotomy for them because they're behind their guy and he represents everything to them and he they think that we all feel that way about whether it's biden or obama before him it's insane it's insane i mean we we see it with like for example the um donald trump his sexual assault case, right? They're like, well, their argument against that is not, oh, we should look into that. Like, maybe we should not stand by this guy. Their thing is, what about Bill Clinton? And then yeah. our reaction is, well, <laughs> if you actually have evidence of not just the scandal that came out in the late 90s with Lewinsky, but you actually have something to corroborate the allegation of rape when he was the state AG, then go to court. Go, go right ahead. We're not going to stop you. Like we're not two sides of the same coin. It is not two teams. There's there's one in an unelected. <laughs> right, right. I mean, like there's 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 one side that is all in for this guy in this cult, and then there's everybody else who they lump together into the other team. We're not the other team. There's never Trump Republicans. There's lifelong Democrats. There's apolitical people who let's not forget are actually the majority in this country. Uh, there's plenty of people who are just not into that that whole cult. But for them, it really is. It's it's they think that how they think about Trump is how everybody else who's not in for Trump thinks about Biden or whoever the next Democratic leader would be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like it's the good old, you know, your greatest fear is what you project on someone else. Like everyone it's, else yes. has to think the way that you do. <laughs> yes. And it, it's yeah, it's not the case. Yeah. You yeah. know, like I am not and, and part of it is just because I'm I'm a, I'm an independent. I've been a lifelong independent, you know, so there are things that certainly I I appreciate the fact that I don't have to agree with everything. Right. Right. Like that's the case. Like I don't have to I don't have to you know, this is not like me rooting for the Eagles. Right. Like the mm -hmm. Eagles have to win all the time. You know, like that's one thing. That's a sport, and it's it. It is. I've, I'm a former athlete, obviously, a lean former athlete. Like so much respect for the people that are, hold themselves out as professionals and that are professionals in these sports. But with that said, it also it also entertains. Mm -hmm. You know, and like the things that that are that are my civic responsibilities and uh, civic interests are different than the ones that are my entertainment interests, right? Mm -hmm. And I think you can apply the same with people. It's like. Okay, but what is really, forget my side saying it, what is a good thing for this country? And what is something that reflects in reflects and does justice to our founding documents? And I, this is kind of my final piece because I know we're going to wrap soon. But I was having recently having a conversation about Martin Luther King and, and about the Civil Rights Movement. And obviously, Black History Month ended a couple of weeks ago. Um, and the thing that I find at this point just hurtful and sad is that Martin Luther King, I'm not the first person to say this, but it's just always reduced to this warm teddy bear who yeah. gave a speech of hope <laughs> and optimism. Yeah. Yeah. And like that is what he stood for. And when you really dig into King, he wasn't, I mean, like he probably, he aligned with the Democrats because really he just, the 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 virulent racism of the south was just always in your face right. you know like so you need to make an alignment with folks that are not actively trying to restrict your existence like that is the world that king is living in that's the world that he dies in right what king's argument was wasn't like hey let's all get together and hug and be best friends his thing was 
America, you need to act on what it is that you say that you are and who that you say that you are. Hmm. Right? Like if all people are created equal under the sight of God, if this is the bedrock of your identity, then apply it. Do hmm. it. Like right. you need to explain to you need to explain to America how this is consistent. He wasn't, you know, and he will support democratic causes in large measure and disagree with them, but it's a lot different than people that are actively trying to resist re, um to restrict his existence. Mm -hmm. Right. So whenever I think about even these issues, you know, like I'm not saying like I'm going to, you know, for lack of a ter better term, caucus with the Democrats. I'm saying that we are still in a world where there are people, whether it's men, whether it's women, whether excuse me, whether it's uh, black folks, whether it's women, you pick your minority. There is a group of people that are actively trying to re uh, restrict your existence. Project 25 dot org whatever it is just google search project 25 2025 right? like it 2025 excuse me yeah yeah they the the platform is clear we're trying to actively right. restrict your existence mm -hmm. right and then you've got people that are saying like hey you know no that's not right but then the question is okay assuming that we know what's wrong assuming that there are people that are against it say what's right right say what's right just say it mm -hmm. You know, like, let's just do it. Let's act on it. Because then it becomes a lot clearer what's not right. You know, like the idea that someone would take away a woman's right, some that we would enable, not someone, let's stop saying, that that we would be okay with the state taking away control of anyone's body. Mm -hmm. Like, period. Like, hey, slavery, again, if you want to go back, it's, it's so interesting that they reference the Constitution, Article 2 of the Constitution, right? That mm -hmm. same, that's it, before the amendments, that same thing spells out the division of for the purposes of taxes mm -hmm. three fifth the, fee, the three fifths compromise like that same document right right so like let's not act like there aren't people that would want to for the purposes of nothing else than greed and power restrict the right of people to exist mm -hmm. that is about as anti-american as you can get and <laughs> This is where your own paranoia comes in. The assumption is that if black people were in power, then we would restrict the, the rights of white people to exist. And that's just never been the argument. Right. It's never been the argument. The argument has been, what do you say that we are and are you living in it? And if you're not, then we need to change it. Although arguably that is the entire, if, if we're going to put these, these anti-democratic people behind Trump and at the Heritage Foundation on the therapist's couch, that would be precisely why they're doing this, right? For them, for them, MAGA really is make America white. Mm -hmm. um, and you look at the people who are the people who are on this this panel who are creating this horror show of a document. Um, at least the the ones who were on the first few pages, you know, all Brooks Brothers, every one of them, um, all look like Tucker Carlson. Mm -hmm. uh, and really, that is their thing. It is this is the angry, violent backlash to. Uh, not just the slavery. election. Well, the end yeah, of slavery. Say, the end of slavery. Well, no, it goes back and forth every single time. Yes, from slavery to Reconstruction, and then the end of Reconstruction and the Civil Rights. I mean, there's been multiple backlashes. I'm saying this is the current one in which we are living mm -hmm. right now. This is a racist backlash in which we're living. The same as the the end of Reconstruction was. The same as uh the the assassination of civil rights leaders in the 1960s. This is the same premise that that's their driving force is to protect and enshrine in law white supremacy even as their numbers not just as white people but as a racist conservative right-wing minority of white people continues to diminish numerically and this is how you and i know this is maybe where we end it but yeah, this is fine. where this is this is where you could make the perfect test case because some people say oh you know christian you're just you're pulling it how terrified were uh, white Republican leaders when Barack Obama not only became the president of the oh, United States of yeah. America, but had a supermajority in Congress. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, it's terrifying. They, they lost their minds. They were wetting their pants. <laughs> the, the, same it, people, not... the same people who call other people snowflakes and call other people hysterical <laughs> were on the floor of the House and Senate just wringing their hands and having anxiety attacks. John Boehner was drunk and sobbing <laughs> on, on, from the podium. I mean, and like, look, it, 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 here's the thing. Here's the thing. The the fear wasn't that it wasn't so much a disappointment that he was elected because they would have gotten disappointed and, you know, just crestfallen if any Democrat was elected. Right. But the fear 
is that he came into power and he had all of it. Mm -hmm. And if he could do it and he's a black man, knowing what we have done, well, excuse me, knowing what, what history has done and America has done to black people, the idea that a black person coming in with a super majority of, of control of the government is terrifying, which is why you put that in the context, when you put that in the context of project 2025, it makes sense. Like that is the thing that can't happen. Like mm -hmm. we can't lose control like that. And you could say, Oh, well, again, you're just making stuff up for clicks. Go back and do your history on re on the end of reconstruction. Right. Look at why reconstruction ended. Right. It was the same fear. Right. You know, like you almost overnight have black people from the South in Congress. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously capitals. at the state level too yep. and state yep. capitals it's like in an instant it's like oh my god we can't all of a sudden give these people power <laughs> right right like it is not like it's it's name that complicated yeah like i'm no you know no academic but this is like this is clearly the fear mm -hmm. and the same fear it's not just black people it's the same fear with hillary clinton like oh my god if we let if we let a woman in and mm -hmm. you know we've got they've got control of congress and they can determine what happens on the courts then we lose all of our leverage and all of our power we've got to do something mm -hmm. yep. donald trump is the perfect avatar for that mm -hmm. because it's like look this guy just says everything he wants we can consolidate power he doesn't care cuz he's not smart enough and is not aware enough <laughs> of what's happening we just need to use him yep. to get what it is that we want mm -hmm. and people just sign up because they love him like it's brilliant you know, like there are people that just love him because he quote unquote keeps it real. Anyway, I'm that's done. crazy. Uh, no, but that's a great way to end it. That I think that that yeah. sums it all up. Everything from the misinformation and the stakes of the next election to really the the dark motivations, at least on the domestic front. There's there's other motivations from Russia and China as to why they want us to go down this dark path. But for for um, it to be possible politically, there has to be those those uh, very awful motivations from people within our own society who are that that's their motivation for themselves. So that's on that uplifting note. <laughs> please, everyone, go and listen. Not listen. Go and look up Project Twenty Twenty Five dot org. If you look up nothing else from all the things we talked about today, John Aleem, thank you guys as always. Great conversation. Really appreciate you both. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, I've got less gray in my beard than everyone on this call. This is incredible. Oh my yeah, goodness. Well, I'm on, yeah, on well, pod. I'm I'm Irish, so that's like <laughs> saying nothing. I don't that's that's not a, a win for you, but about eight, okay. eight percent, maybe maybe eight percent Irish. All right. Oh, All right, guys. Happy St. And, Patrick's right. Day. Isn't that, uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, See you. Yeah.